And I want to show you this. This is going to be huge for those of you at home that want to understand. So we know that we saw the CPI data. Guys, let's let's talk. Let's get into the chart. So we had Bitcoin breakdown. Um, here, let me just switch to my screen. We had Bitcoin breakdown uh, below that thirty thousand or twenty nine thousand five hundred range, depending on where you, you are looking at that range. Probably preempting the FOMC. Some people are saying that this is like a flash out, and then it's going to reverse course and go back up. Others are saying that this is actually the breakdown, and then we're going to get to the you know, 20, 28,500, 28,600. Let's cut straight to the point. Where are we going with this Bitcoin chart? Yeah, so so there's no doubt that we've broken now below the range that I've been talking about. I think we've been in this range now for well over a month, maybe six weeks. So it was long overdue to break one way or the other. It tried to break out to the upside multiple times. A couple things I want to show you. This candle right here. That's a called a topping tail. That's a bearish candle. Um, it then retried again, closing above, and you got a reversal candle, a reversal. Notice how the size of the red is equal to the green. That's never a good sign. It then hammered on this, eventually breaking down. So listen, as a trader, all I'm all I all I care about is the levels, right? So first level is around 28.4, 28.3. That's this pivot high. That's going to be first support. If it breaks through that, the big level to watch is around 27,000. All right. It's this upsloping trend line coming all the way back from January of 2023. Now, the reason why this one's the big one, because this is the uptrend trend line, meaning that as long as this one holds, if you're a bull and you think this is a new bull market, then this is your spot. This is your spot to say, okay, as long as this holds, this is a new bull market. If this breaks, the uptrend trend line has broken and you have to start getting nervous about us starting to trade back towards the lows on Bitcoin. So that's the downside kind of analysis. The upside for bulls, you want to see this 31,000 level broken and it hold above there for about five to seven days. And then I think you're shooting to 35 and maybe 45,000. Okay, I'm going to ask you as a betting man, I'm going to ask you to take two bets. The first bet is, do we go up from here or down from here? So now it's 29,102. Do you think that this is like the pre-FOMC flash out and then we go up? Or do you think that we go down and we try and test that 27,000? I'm in the 27,000 camp. I, I think that, again, there was so many buyers here and they're going to get disappointed as it goes down. You'll see some of those buyers kind of fold and say, hey, listen, now I'm not so confident. And I think that added selling will take us down to 27. 27 is going to be the, the question mark in my mind. You know, I, I still think that the risk for crypto is that the stock market rolls over in a major way. And if we see downside of 10, 20 percent in the NASDAQ, it's hard for me to imagine Bitcoin holding up at 27 or above for that. So so, again, that would be the the case for breaking below 27,000 is if the stock market starts to break down. Okay, so let's quickly pivot the stock market. So that's the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones right now, if I if I take it from its all-time high, I'm going to just draw a little, a little line over here. It is 3% away from its all-time high. Then you've got mm -hmm. the fear and greed index on the stock market. Extreme greed. I mean, there is extreme greed on the stock market. I'm seeing some really bad signs. I'm seeing the biggest bears in the world capitulate. I mean, I saw this, we were wrong. Morgan Stanley's Wilson offers stocks mea culpa. And this is Mike Wilson, who is a forecaster who's been negative. He's now turned, you know, he's now uh, buckled, if you if, if you want to call it that. That to me is never a good sign. That to me is always a sign that, that yeah. it feels awfully, awfully, awfully toppy. What yeah. are you thinking here? So, so number one, and, and you touched on the Federal Reserve tomorrow. We got to touch on that. So the first thing I will say is Jerome Powell is going to remain very hawkish tomorrow. They're raising by 25, and he's going to probably guide that they will have to raise again before the end of the year. I don't think he'll say next meeting, but he'll say before the end of the year. And I want to show you this. This is going to be huge for those of you at home that want to understand. So we know that we saw the CPI data come in dramatically, right? So here's a chart of the CPI data. This is energy. Notice how energy was the biggest component of the CPI data that fell, which brought the overall CPI down to that 3%-ish level. All right, if here's food, and here's all items less food and energy. So we know food was up, energy was down. I want to show you guys this, and this is why CPI is going to stall at 3% and actually probably uptick a little bit, which is going to make it very hard for the Fed to turn dovish. All right, if we look at oil, take a look at oil. Just in the last month, since the last CPI, now remember, month over month, CPI fell last time better than expected. Oil but is up since 15%. July, oil is up right, 15%. 15% up in oil. All right, how about gasoline, which is a huge component of the CPI? 
up 15 to 20 percent in the last month. How about DBA, which is agriculture? Okay, this is agriculture, so corn, wheat, all that. 52 week highs on agriculture. All right, so essentially, if we go back to this, energy is going to go back up this way, food is going to go up higher. And we already know all other items are still positive. So for me, this is telling me that the Fed is not going to be happy here, and they're likely to stay on the hawkish side at the meeting going forward. So if you look at the Cleveland Fed, and they're pretty good at forecasting CPI, they actually forecasting a slight uptick in inflation. Inflation was at 3%. They're actually forecasting inflation to go back up to 3.36%, which is doesn't sound like a lot, but it's an uptick. And I must say, one thing I, I really, really, really agree with you on uh, that a lot of people maybe aren't seeing. A lot of people are saying that Powell's going to come out there and he's going to be dovish. He's going to go out there and he's going to say, you know, we've seen inflation, inflation starting to come down. We're doing one interest rate increase. And if I look at what the market is is forecasting here, let me quickly just um, let me quickly just show you this. So if you look at what the market is forecasting, the market is currently saying, look, there's an interest rate increase happening now. And then if I look at the future probabilities. There are no more interest rate increases. And actually, there's a, a decrease happening in March next year. I think the market is absolutely wrong here. Powell's coming out tomorrow, and he's going to say, he's going to say, we, inflation is too high. We haven't reached our inflation target. We're going to look at the data, and probably more increases are going are to happen. And I think that what's going to happen then is the stock markets are going to respond by coming down and coming down with a bit of a whack. And then I think you may be right, and Bitcoin breaks down and hits that 20. I think it, I, I'm very much in, in the camp that we're very much firmly in a bull run. But I just think that we may have run. If we just go back to your chart quickly, let's just, just go back to, to your chart, which is your Bitcoin chart. I think we just ran too fast, too quickly. If I look at all those green candles, it just feels to me like those green candles went up too fast, too quickly. We've got to come back towards trend, hit the trend line like we hit the last two or three times, and then bounce back up and then carry on in the bull market. That, that's really the camp that I'm on. Yeah, I want you before you go, because I know you've got another stream to go to, but I want you to look at the Dixie. So yep. the Dixie is, um, yeah, so I'll show you. That's what the Dixie is, is. There is that massive support resistance level that the Dixie is kind, kind of just broken. And I'm seeing um, crypto Twitter, and I'm seeing all the Wyckoff patterns and the fact that the dollar is now going to regain into its strength. And uh, w wondering what you think when you when you look at the Dixie. Yeah, so so the, the trend line you're following is definitely an important trend line. I want to show you this trend line, though. So if we take the pivot low going back to 2021 and it connects through here, to me, this is the one that I'm watching and this is where I think the dollar is going. So I think the dollar is still in a bearish pattern and I think the dollar will eventually break down. But this is the line that I'm looking at right here, which is right around 102.40. So I think there's a little bit more upside. Makes sense if the Fed is hawkish, the dollar could get a little bit of a bounce, but I think it stalls right there. And I'll show you why this is important. Look at this. So we have a secondary trend line right here and look at what happened. We came into the line, we bounced, we then came in and broke. We then bounced back to that same trend line. So back to the scene of the crime, we came down, we bounced, we broke down again. It makes sense. We need to go back and retest that line. So it's following the same pattern here. And likely we have to go back here before that next move down. I still think the dollar's ultimately going lower, but I do think it, there's probably a little bit more upside first to go.